Okay, buenos dias. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me to speak on behalf of Pulsar Vascular and now part of Codman Neurovascular, recently acquired uh, December. Um, so I am from Los Gatos, California. Um, Pulsar Vascular is also located in the town. So, por qué el nombre Los Gatos? Um, por qué gatos pequeños o más largo? Um, por qué uh, leones de montañas? So, I'll stop speaking Spanish because it's, it's going to be very bad. So, in the history, uh, as you probably are aware, you know, the uh, establishment of the missions in California, coming up the El Camino Real, when they came to this town, they saw mountain lions. But if they named the town, you know, Leones de Montaña, no one would live there, so stuck with the impression of smaller cats. Um, that being said, they still are there today. I live up in the hills above the town, and I just saw a mountain lion last year, so they're still there. So I am here to uh, represent the Pulse Rider, uh, which is a novel treatment for wide neck aneurysms. You've heard about some other devices that have been uh, up and coming. We are not yet approved in the U.S. We'll talk about our trial, but very soon, we hope. But we are approved in uh, Europe. So a little bit of history about Pulsar Vascular. Uh, it was founded in 2006. The, the premise of the company was to treat aneurysms that were focused on the, focusing on technology at the neck of the aneurysm. In other words, uh, in my background, I used to work many years at Target Therapeutics. I'm a biomedical engineer. Uh, I helped in the acquisition of uh, Neuroform for, for them and uh, worked on a number of products, including uh, like Trispan, if you, you remember that one, Trispan, you call it. But I was always fascinated by uh, the fact that as I, I learned from the, uh, you know, many of the physicians who taught me uh, about anatomy, that the main issue is treating the neck of the aneurysm. It's not about the dome. It's, you really want to put as minimum amount of metal and really focus on neck reconstruction to give you a good, long-lasting, stable result. So that was the premise. Uh, I came on board as uh, the CEO, but there was a founder was an INR and uh, an engineer, and they had a premise. The original premise was actually a flow occluder, which had a barrier, and it was going to clip into the neck of the aneurysm and then detach. And that is the fundamental of our IP and the, uh, the desire of the company. That being said, the early delivery was interesting, but at that time, flow diversion was in its very, very early stages, and we felt maybe it's too early to go directly for that result. Uh, a lot of clinical unknown. So when I uh, was on board, I took a look, took a step back and said, you know, we have a platform here that can really work with coils. And coils are a wonderful tool, as we all know. So why not enable coils to treat the wide neck aneurysms in a much better way? So the company has platforms that you will see in the not too distant future that will include barriers and mesh that will flow divert, but not at this time. The um, Pulse Rider itself was CE marked in 2014. It's been established with, uh, at that time, our distribution partner, Codman Neuro, and approaching 300 cases to date in nine or, or 10 countries around Europe. Um, recently, we completed the enrollment of the 34 patients in our clinical study. Um, my colleague, Claire Houston, in the audience, when we get to the uh, US trial, she is uh, responsible for the nice work there. And uh, as I said, Pulsar was acquired by Kahneman in December. So for those of you not familiar with the Pulse Rider, uh, it is a, a self-expanding nitinol device, the implant itself. It has a very unique design. Uh, I am the designer of this device. My background is in uh, both bioengineering and metallurgy. So I have a very long background in nitinol, a long, long-lived background, and as you can see, when you look at it, the first impression is, well, why are some other devices, they have multiple cells and they need a lot of support. How can you claim to have a device with essentially one unit cell that opens, covers only the neck of the aneurysm as an arch, and yet, how, how is it stable? Well, I'm going to get to that as I continue my talk. 
But the device comes in the T and the Y shape for the reason of the various anatomies. We wanted to provide the clinician the choice and has eight radiopaque markers, which I'll explain why they are positioned where they are. The delivery wire is a stainless steel. It has a unique wishbone uh, stainless steel um, fork that is attached to both of the bases, and that allows one to torque the device and position, and it is electrolytically detached using our own pulsar detachment system and cables. It is placed through any O21 microcatheter, and that is the, the, the way to access, and then uh, there is a torque device so that you can torque our device. So the basic overview of the design, it's a very, very flexible arch. The top portion, unlike other stent-like devices or laser-cut nitinol, each of those leaflets are independent suspension. So when you access the, uh, through the device with a microcatheter, it very, very softly pushes out of the way. So you do not have to select to go through the mid markers as shown here. You can actually position your catheter any location and it, the little leaflets will push out of the way. As an engineer, we did testing on the uh, softness of the device. Those leaflets that are, are seen there, the wings of the device are very soft and they measure in tensile force very similar to the forces of a, a complex coil uh, or even uh, uh, the tip of a microcatheter. So very soft and gentle and we'll see you're also able to place the device inside the aneurysm. The main thing to take away, and we'll stress this as I go along, is that this is trying to treat a bifurcation shape with no metal blocking any of the arterial flow. So it literally expands in all directions, in anchors itself, and in no cross section, as you can see, is, is in the way of the blood flow. And we think that's very unique to Pulse Rider. So how do you deploy it? You'll see in the microcatheter, the um, two distal markers are right near the tip, and then you're going to very slowly unsheath it. Now, that's a very important part, point for those who may have used Pulse Rider or are thinking about using it. You really want to be slow. You get to this point just proximal to the neck if you're going to be extra aneurysmal, or you can go just inside, just a little bit inside, and very gently, sometimes you know, physicians are, are maybe a little hurry. They want to unsheath very quickly. That is not at all uh, the desire. You want to make very small millimeter motions and watch the, the leading uh, marker is slightly asymmetric on purpose. So you'll see one marker slightly ahead of the other and that provides you the orientation because it's very key. You're going to need to orient the device if it deploys off axis. Normally, the device naturally wants to seat in a low energy state, so many times the first position is the best one, but it is meant to be resheathed, repositioned by torquing gently. You pull back into the microcatheter, you watch your distal markers, you gently apply maybe a turn or two of torque, and then as you advance again, it will rotate maybe 45 degrees, maybe 90, and then you really should be done because you don't need to you know, rotate around. So that is the device on the right side with the uh, full deployment. And another thing to note, you see the, um, the wishbone uh, attachment before the detach. It's very important to realize that the benefit of the device is that you can reposition. So it will move. You want to hold it in place as you put your coiling catheter. And then when the procedure is done, you put a few coils. You don't have to do all the coils. You could put three and then detach. The um, proximal base is designed to come out like this. In addition, the design is such that the arch, the upper portion, is meant to push back against the coil. So in other words, the more you pack, the more, like a Roman arch, it's going to be very, very supportive, even though it's soft, it's going to, to lift. And you'll see examples in the cases. And you'll know you're getting there because these uh, nitinol, um, segments will begin to flex a little bit and you'll see that. So one of the most important aspects and differentiators of Pulse Rider, and that's something we're very proud of, is I tried to design it with the user in mind, meaning anatomies are complex. No aneurysm looks like a cartoon. They're very complicated. You should have the ability to choose 
and it's in the instructions, you can go extra aneurysmal, more like a stent-like approach. You can put the uh, wings inside, deploy and pull back, and you get a very nice parabolic reconstruction of the neck, much akin to the old trispan. And then there are times when one branch is slightly above the other and you don't want to comp uh, compromise a branch, you can do a hybrid approach. So let's get back to the speciality of the design and the fact that in all dimensions, and if you want to see more uh, after the, the meeting, I can show you a model, but it's hard to, for some people to realize that all the metal in all three dimensions is pressed up against the wall, especially at the neck and then the proximal section. And you can, it is meant to be re-entered very easily if you need to retreat. So unlike Y-stenting, let me go back, unlike a Y-stenting approach where you have to go through one uh, side and then the cylindrical shape of the other, compromising you know, and jailing the vessels, the pulse rider doesn't do that. You have complete open space. The device comes in multiple configurations and sizes. You've got a T shape and a Y shape, and you pick the one that is closest to the anatomical situation, like MCA, maybe the Y shape, basilar, maybe T shape, but they're both very, very soft and flexible, and you can really choose the best fit for your case. And they come in parent vessel size. So you size the device by the, the base of the uh, parent artery, 2.7 to 35, 35 to 45, and then finally, you know, in, in assessing the wingspan, so to speak, you've got an 8.6 and a 10.6. But that being said, we are one of the few um, devices to treat the ultra-wide, meaning, you know, 11 millimeters. Our first case in Buenos Aires, um, you know, it was Dr. Lilik, he placed this device in an aneurysm neck that was over 11 millimeters, and it was the very first time. And as the engineer, I was like, wow, the whole device is, you know, free up in the uh, neck, you know, is it really going to support in a real human situation, despite all the test data, which was great, but you want to see that. And so it proved to us that you can take a large aneurysm and pack it, and indeed the design of the base of the device, which is meant to do this, presses outward. The more you press on top, the more it wants to do that, and very softly sustains itself. So what have we done so far in terms of experience? In Europe, we have done all the territories you see here, MCA, ACOM, carotid terminus, and basilar. In the US, the trial was limited to only basilar and carotid terminus because we were seeking an HDE uh, indication, and so the FDA had limited the number to a certain threshold, and that will be the uh, hopeful allowance in the US, but in Europe, you may treat all these locations. So I referred to our US clinical trial. We call it the ANSWER study. This will be soon published in the Journal of Neurosurgery, I think within a, a few months, we believe. So what was the study? Because it was an HDE, we were required to do a smaller uh, cohort, 34 subjects, 10 sites. Uh, some of the investigators are here in the room. Um, the enrollment was completed in 2015, and then we had uh, follow-up, uh, you know, 30 days, 180 days to assess uh, stability. And um, all of this was done, uh, you know, we, we've completed the uh, follow-up, and then Almost all of the patients are out to a year now, uh, approximately 31 or 32 are done out to a year. So here's a summary of the uh, results, the, the primary endpoints uh, for safety, death or major stroke in the downstream territory to 180 days. We had none. Uh, technical success in positioning and placing the device was 100%. And the rate of aneurysm occlusion at day zero and 180 days is listed, and you can see the Ramon scale. If you um, look at the uh, sum of Ramon one and two, or adequate occlusion at uh, 180 days, we have essentially 88 percent. We're, we're very happy with that result, and uh, we have submitted um, earlier this year to FDA, and we're in the you know process of their review. We th we believe we're getting you know close. Here's a summary of uh, presentations and publications to date. Um, again, Claire Houston's done a wonderful job in support of uh, the company. We've been in, in many of the conferences that you recognize. Um, we've had early case 
uh, anecdotal uh, presentations. Um, in Val d'Isere last year, I think we had four presentations, and this year there should be one. Um, but I think the most uh, outstanding result we're very proud of would be the answer trial data. And just a few cases to uh, give you examples. Uh, a large basilar aneurysm, this one is from Europe. Um, and you can see this is a very large wide neck aneurysm, difficult to treat. You want to sustain your, your branch flow. And I can't comment on all your choices that would be available today, but in my opinion, this, you know, you want to very delicately handle this wide neck and not compromise. How are you going to do that? You're going to need to put in, uh, you know, many, many coils. So you can see here two views. Uh, the the um, lateral view really demonstrates the power of the arch. And you can see that even though from the other view, the coils look like they may be in the parent vessel, in, in the branch, they really are not. They are outside the arch. Um, the arch has a few markers that indicate that. And I think you can see it's done a, a nice job here. This next case is from the US trial, also a, a fairly wide neck um, aneurysm. And again, I think the markers you can see very nicely. This time you've got the, the two um, end markers, the two mid markers that form a nice line across the neck to assure you you've reconstructed properly and that you're at the appropriate point of the neck you want to be. And as you can see uh, in the other view, you have uh, a nice result with the uh, arch. Here's an MCA case. Um, Again, we're, we're agnostic to the dome. You can have a dome with multi lobes. You can have a dome that's very complex. And unlike some devices that are intraaneurysmal, they obviously are going to be challenged by that. We, uh, using the uh, sort of old school coiling, we can allow you to, to take care of these with a focus on reconstructing the neck. And here you can see, if you had any questions about the flexibility and tortuous approach, you can see nicely the pulse rider can be positioned into place and Hopefully, you can determine the, the mid markers, uh, which are in the center, that help you get a sense of the orientation. And uh, the proximal markers are where the device detaches. And then lastly, a, a carotid terminus aneurysm, again from the US. Um, you can see the positioning of the device. In this case, we have very good overlap of the, the wings or shoulders of the device. So there's you know, significant confidence there. And then, you know, final uh, situation. So in, again, in, in kind of summarizing, um, the device is intended to give you versatility, to allow you the softness to go inside if you desire, and to recreate more of a basket and par parabola inside, or for, for those users who prefer to stay extra aneurysmal, it's uh, very well suited. And again, the goal is very, very minimal metal in the parent vessel. We have so little that we uh, hope to follow up with thoughts about a trial for ruptured aneurysms. Right now, it's indicated for unruptured, but the belief is there's so, so little metal, it's very well opposed. We can you know, start thinking that way, but we are only indicated right now with uh, dual platelet. Well, thank you very much. Any comments or questions? Uh, Rob, uh, very nice presentation. Any, any of the European guys with uh, experience of doing this in a rupture scenario with aspirin alone? Yes, we, we've had a, a few cases like that. I mean, it was up to their own judgment and the particulars. And um, I think we have. I'm pretty sure we have the six-month outcome data, but I have to look. But uh, yes, there's been a, a few. Because that's one of the things with the pulse rider for me is, uh, again, going back to the talk, again, for rupture and I think you have so, the, the, so, the device so skinny, the anchor on the parent vessel that probably can get away just with aspirin alone. So you could potentially use that. And the second one, any retreatment with a flow diverter or retreatment with a stent because yes. one concern with the post rider that I have is you're not diverging the flow from the aneurysm. Again, even though you have the, the umbra shape, uh, right. you have the scales there to hold the coil mass, I'm not sure how effective it would be in flow diversion. So have you done any simulation flow diversion with the post rider or two retreatment right. with, uh, uh, with uh, other 
tools like sure. stent or flow diversion? Yeah, there, there's really two parts to that question. One is, um, you know, how much flow diversion does one get from the existing cover? Um, not enough to make a claim. I mean, obviously you need uh, more. So the company right now is developing a new version of Pulse Rider called the High Density that will have much more coverage. They'll still use it with coils, but you'll see, um, you know, close to 30% of the, the top is covered. And then after that, there will be a device that we have uh, in development, which will be a true mesh, which will you know, give you nice endothelialization, and that one is coming after. We've done some animal testing with that, but the goal of the company is to leverage its platform and get you comfortable with the first, second, and then, sorry, and the third. Um, as far as existing use with other devices, physicians, for example, have had issues sometimes with a, a web that maybe have moved a little bit. It's been a wonderful tool, uh, I, I believe 10 or more cases have been retreated, uh, or sorry, I'm getting, a, I'm getting a sign four, sorry, I, I, I'm wrong about that. So a, f a few cases with the web where the difficulty there, as you know, there's a bit of a gap and you can treat and it's a nice tool when you have that situation if it occurs. And then I've understood that other devices have been used, one Medina coil, one Elvis Jr. So people are experimenting. It is suitable for use with other devices, but we don't indicate it is designed really to be used with coils. That is up to the user to make a judgment. But it is open architecture and is designed so you can go through it as, as needed. One question. Um, I treated the patient 15 years before with the three span. Three span is the flowers of the Boston, and the, the, this is intrasacular position. Uh, at the, the, this, this type of aneurysm is just uh, before the remodeling technique, and the, this technique is very easy, very easy to reproductively for, for, for any doctor, but the problem is you are too much recanalization. Um, do you think the, the difference with the pulse rider is the, the flaps is inside the vessel, maybe is this, this big difference, mm. or I, I think that maybe it's not, it's not, uh, it's not convenient to, to put the flowers in, inside the sac. It's better in the, in the, in the parent vessel. Well, there's a few elements to that. The, I mean, when I worked on TriSpan, the goal was to give you a tool and then, you know, allow the coil mass to interact with the soft um, flower and push it down and you know you would get a good result well sometimes that wasn't perfect and you could get a recurrence so that device in my opinion would need some future enhancement and there were ways to improve it but it was the first one out there many many years ago now pulse rider gives you more leaflets that when you look at the articulation of the leaflets when you go inside much better reconstruction with more points of metal contact to the coil so we believe you're gonna get a much better intimate result at the neck. And a lot of it depends on the, the user. You've gotta obviously make sure you're comfortable with the position before you stop. If you don't like it, reposition. But it should be superior, in, in my opinion, to the tri-span. Uh, thanks for the presentation. As you know, uh, we are trying to avoid to put uh, free material in the parent artery around the neck even with a single coil, uh, you know, prolapsing outside of the, the side branch, we are trying to do our best to compress this coil inside the aneurysm. Even we are thinking to put the stent to compress the coil against the vessel wall. Uh, as far as I saw the pulsar cases uh, from the presentation, of course, uh, I realized that that the majority of them, the pulsar legs, not actually fitting the anatomy. Especially the, the, the you know, the, I expect that the material which is designed for the neck should adapt the vessel, I mean the bifurcation properly, that the legs should be touched to the upper portion close by the neck. And how do you explain that there is a per perfect the protection for such design, even Y shape or T shape, hmm. not properly adaptive bifurcation because majority of the case, not the case you shown here, 
and then the, the we need to put additional more stents to adapt that mm -hmm. legs against the vessel wall, or we should start to give again the same anti-aggregate hmm. regimen. What do you think about it? I'm a, I guess I'm a little confused as to the leg portion is mainly in the um, this, this, proximal. This is, this is the same. Let me, yeah. let me show it to you. Do you have a okay. laser point? I, I don't have Yeah, one. this is a good you example. Point do you have a laser point? Somebody have a laser point? Look at that. On the, on the left side, uh -huh. look at Yeah, thank you. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. Look at that. Look at the marker. Mm -hmm. It seems that this marker at the tip, where it is. Yeah. Do you think it is touching the wall? We've gone to great lengths to verify in many of the cases where the angle is questioned depending on the orientation of the view. Sometimes it appears that it is not. And I mean, maybe Claire can, can speak to the, the US trial experience. But in most of the cases I was familiar with, um, the physicians were careful to do rotation and to verify that it's actually on to, the wall. To, to convince, actually, uh, that this, this mentality, I suggest you before putting coils, mm -hmm. it is better to do a flat panel detector CT imaging right. to show it. That's a good point. Okay. Najat, as usual, great seeing you. Uh, I think we got away with that, just like we got away with uh, Enterprise before. The device is not fully opposed to the wall, but the amount of metal is so low that you get away without major thromboembolic with that. Uh, I see what Rob is saying again. There, if you think about, there's a dot there, and there, there's a V of metal that comes out there. Is that V straight, straight from the metal? That V is both. Right. You don't see that on this picture. Well, if but you look at the mid marker, it, it is oriented down like that. So if they were, I mean, that's the way we try to assure it. When you look at the mid marker alignment, and then where it is. But I don't yeah. deny it's but, possible. But, but I think yeah. what Nigel is saying, I think we get away with that, even sure. if it's not touching the wall, because the amount of metal is low. That's what we get away with. That, that, that is true, that actually the, the mechanism of the stint is at the comparing the other neck bridging device is far better uh, in terms of the metal concentration. But anyhow, that, that design has some lack. Maybe you may produce other design because of the asymmetric geometry of the bifurcation aneurysm. Maybe one leg will be the shorter than the other mm -hmm. to get rid of this, for example. Now, it's an interesting point in the original um, design uh, submission of like the the patent we talk about asymmetries but you know the company is a small company we make enough variety but it's a good point I mean you want to get everything just right and uh, we can make more shapes and sizes yeah. mm -hmm. very very short comment mm. I don't like device in normal vessel so it's for future it's not good it's uh, 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 the best device it's only for pathologic uh, uh, pathologic artery so for any reason uh, neck and sac but not in the normal vessels it, mm -hmm. it's my opinion okay